Jack, and this it says, in common sense, your 10-year forecast used average earnings growth plus current dividend yield. For consistency, why not use average dividend growth? Uh, you could use average dividend growth instead of earnings growth. It doesn't give you as good a result, as accurate a result, because companies' payout ratios change. So if someone wants to argue that it's the more pristine formula, and that's actually what we call the Gordon formula, fairly well known in academia, uh, the market value relative to the future cash flow. And uh, you know, this is, they call my thing the, the, Bogle, model, the, the Bogle variation on the Gordon model. Uh, I happen to like the earnings growth better. There's a great intellectual defense, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> But it works in the data, and I think it's easier to follow. And you don't have to worry about changing the payouts, which have changed a lot way down over time. But they're both approximations, and they're, they're pretty good approximations. It's amazing to me how well that formula has worked. Uh, not, not formula for what the market will do, but a formula for uh, establishing reasonable expectations, I think I mentioned earlier, of what the markets will do. And none of this stuff is perfect. And I think, you know, I think we all ought to be aware of the fact that if you're looking for precision in any of these things, you know, please don't look to me for it. I don't have any precision. I have a directional idea. Uh, I have a strong idea of what creates value in the marketplace. That is to say, earnings growth with dividend yields. And uh, that's about it. And that's all you can control. But if it does work, it calls attention to being skeptical of what the market is doing with those fundamental uh, returns investment returns earned by corporate America. And that's why I say, and I'll repeat it once more, I think I said it last night, I'll repeat it again today, uh, we're probably repeating it to, to my dying day, which I hope is not today. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, uh, the stock market is a giant distraction to the business of investing. Or to put it away, I did to these professors down in Southampton and Bermuda, um, the uh, I don't remember the exact formulation I used for that about uh, the stock market is a derivative. And the stock market is a derivative of corporate value underlying or created by corporate America. So think about the stock market. The stock price is a derivative of the value of the corporation or the value of American business as a whole. And that gets you into the whole area of derivatives. What sense do they make? Uh, the magnification of returns, which you saw on those charts. Magnified way up, magnified way down, and, and ignore it because you know it's going to be in the long run zero. That's the nature of things. So, am I dogmatic about this? You better believe I am. Does Lenny doubt? Anybody want to raise their hand? Oh, by the way, I, can my eyes question? Uh, we had, we've had a little discussion about, uh, and, and I talk about this in my Financial Analyst Journal article about how to charge uh, advisory costs outside you know, financial advisory costs, sales loads, whatever, uh, against accounts, uh, against the returns that investors earn. And you kind of end up trying to approximate it. But I just want to ask you all, uh, I'll express it in a simple way and then just give me one second to explain. Uh, I'd love to see a show of hands of how many of you consider yourself do-it-yourself investors. And, and if you're not, how many of you can self consider yourself you need an investment advisor? And there's a lot of ground between those two. Pure do it to yourself means you get started and you don't have somebody telling you anything to do but your fellow vocal heads, your, you know, whatever, however you feel. And the other is you rely on an advisor to tell you everything. So, can I just see a couple of hands on the number of hands that are available? How many of you consider yourself do it yourself? <laughs> wow. The message is getting across. And how, how many would say they, they need significant help? <laughs> I presume that excludes the help I'm giving you this morning. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, in the, I'm not amazed at the, the dominance of do-it-yourself, but I am amazed that it seems to be unanimous. 